Vegas, I know it's the middle of the week and it's been raining and sometimes we need to pick me up. Today, we got a pick me up that comes with some accolades. Former NFL quarterback Heisman Trophy. You see him throughout ESPN with college football and NFL coverage and his brand new podcast quickly becoming one of my favorites, RG3 and the Ones. Robert Griffin III, it is your second time on the show. So first and foremost, congratulations. You are now a friend of the show. And now that you're a friend, I can ask you for a favor as we start this. Rob, okay. can we get some Cat Williams energy for this interview? Yes or no? <laughs> some Cat Williams energy. Listen, Cat Williams is telling all kind of secrets. I don't know if I can do that for you, but we definitely going to have some fun. And look, we, we of course, a lot of things are going on with the Raiders. Uh, earlier today, they finally hired the GM. Antonio yep. Pierce is here, the, the official head coach and not the interim. But when we bring people in, we have to bring them into our world. And I need to crack, you know, inside Robert Griffin III, outside the football field. So um, okay. I don't know if you saw this earlier today. Las Vegas, the Lovers and Friends Festival was just announced. They have the lineup. So I'm going to run through some names really quick, and let's see if they're in your playlist or not. Are we okay. ready for this? I'm ready. What's up, oh. kiddo? Hey, <laughs> hey shout oh, out to the oh, baby. baby. Baby, come get Gia. Uh, by the All way, right, if, if, my, if my son, Sire, runs in here, too, we both at home right now. <laughs> this is dangerous territory. All right, here's the lineup, though. We okay. got Snoop Dogg. Nope, yes. Easy. easy, yep. Uh, Usher performing Confessions. I mean, come on now. Lil Wayne performing the entire Carter 3. Oh, okay. Nas. Yeah, I got all them. Gwen Stefani. Nelly. I, I don't have any Gwen Stefani on my playlist, but I all respect to Gwen Stefani. T Pain. Oh, come on now. Buy you a drink. Uh Janet Jackson. Yes. Rick Ross. <laughs> yes. Method Man and Red Man. Easy. Okay, last one. Let's uh, let's let's see who else do we got in here? 98 degrees, Joe to see Black, Sean Paul, Craig David. Are we rocking with this? We're, ro we're rocking with it, but I don't have all of them in my playlist. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I feel you. I feel you. Plus, you know, before the festival, there's going to be a lot of things going on for the Super Bowl. Um, but l let's get into the Raiders situation. And and I, I want to start off with the the new head coach, Antonio Pierce. Yeah. And, and I want to take you back to when you were down here and you got a chance. I know it was brief. You got a chance yep. to talk to him on the sidelines. Yep. Uh, sidelines, of course, when he was the interim head coach. Just right. that first impression getting to talk to him in that conversation. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we had done uh, we had done a Raiders game earlier in the year before he was the interim head coach. And he was talking to me and the crew. And you could tell, like, he already knew at that point what the team needed. But he was respectful enough of Josh McDaniels to not make it seem like, hey, this guy's not giving him that. But when you talk to Antonio Pierce and anytime I've been around him, you you see that he's a very observant guy. And whenever you replace someone uh, in a job like that as an interim head coach, you have to bring something different to the table. You know, I had a conversation with Jeff Saturday when he went and did and he was the interim in the, for the Colts. And he told me, like, he changed the practice schedule. He changed how they lifted weights. He changed how they communicated in the room because the team has to feel like something's different. And for Antonio Pierce, I believe he brought that in. But he also brought the fun back. Like when you think of the Raiders, man, you don't think buttoned up. Patriot way, super like, yes, sir. All right. We're going to do what we can do to win. Military camp type you know vibes. You don't, think, mm, you don't think about that. You think of the Raider way, rugged, gritty, in your face, never going to back down from anything. And he brought that back. Uh, for a team like the Raiders to win with defense and Aiden O'Connell at quarterback, no disrespect to Aiden O'Connell. I thought he handled himself very nicely throughout the year. But winning with defense has never really been – the method for success in the NFL long time, long term, especially for an interim coach, he did that. That was the most impressive thing. And and to me, the thing that I was happiest the most, and and obviously the players spoke publicly about what they wanted. But even if you look at recent history with the Raiders, you know, Rich Basaccia did great when he was the interim and they went and they decided to go in a different direction. Now for the 23rd head coach in this team's history, it's a kid from long beach in a story that could basically <laughs> end up on Disney plus in a few years. If yeah. everything goes right. And this Raiders team, there's, there's pieces here, yes. but there's a lot to figure out. It is a tough division 
with a guy in Patrick Mahomes who seemingly can't be beat unless his entire offensive line is injured in the Super Bowl against the Buccaneers. <laughs> but is this a step in the right direction in your opinion? Yeah, it is a step in the right direction. And I'll say this, you know, Patrick Mahomes, uh, they might as well name the AFC Championship game after him. Like, he's been the sixth straight of them bad boys. So when you come in as a coach in that division, you are building your team to beat that guy. And the best way to beat that guy is to create pressure on the quarterback. Uh, right now in the postseason, Patrick Mahomes has been sacked zero times. In the Crazy. regular season, the Chiefs were one in three when he got sacked at least three times. So that's always been the method for stopping great QBs. And when your best player, Max Crosby, comes out and says, I'm not going to be here if y'all don't bring back this, this uh, head coach, Antonio Pierce, that speaks to the level of trust and belief they have in him. So for me with Antonio Pierce, you know, I don't want to go on a tangent here, but I'm like a really, I'm a big believer in being a head coach has nothing to do with going through the ranks. It has nothing to do with being a, a coordinator in the NFL, a coordinator in college or a head coach in college. There's no correlation to any of those positions and becoming a successful head coach. So when I look at a guy like Antonio Pierce, the thing that he does best is he gets the team to see his vision of what they should be and make it their identity. There's no way a team like the Raiders should have been able to finish the year the way that they did and almost make the playoffs after the way that they started. So it is a step in the right direction. They got the right guy. Now, I'm going to go ahead. I don't know what your next question is, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you what it needs to be. They got to go get their quarterback. I believe that is Jaden Daniels out of LSU. Uh, Pierce recruited him at Arizona State, and I believe Jaden Daniels makes the Raiders a playoff team instantly. His ability to throw the football, run the football, beat them with his mind, hands down, they're a playoff team with Jaden Daniels at quarterback. I asked you at the beginning of this interview to give me some Cat Williams energy, and you just gave me the highlight to put on Instagram. <laughs> so I appreciate you, my G. But I do I do want to focus on one thing, though, before we get to the QB, um, yeah. because I think it, it's fascinating. And you brought up Max Crosby. Like, yep. I know that we are in the player empowerment era all right. throughout sports, started by LeBron and the guys in the, in the NBA. But in the NFL, to see someone come out and call their shot and say, yo, if you guys don't make the right decision – I'm fine. I don't know how much time I have at this level in the NFL, so I'm not going to waste it here as much as I love this city and as much right. of a person he is in the community. But beyond that, I think one thing that doesn't get talked about in any sport when you are an organization is that when you don't treat people the right way, yes. that not only sends them like, for example, if they if 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 they didn't uh, hire AP right and Max right. Crosby ends up leaving, you're talking about a guy who I just said is in the community has given how many snaps did he play this year and he's not getting talked <laughs> for defense player of the year and right. you're going to treat him bad. What does that say for the guy on the practice squad? What does that say for free agents? What does that say for dudes being drafted? Anybody on the staff? Like, I think that's so underrated. And I could look at Detroit right now and go back to when Dan Campbell got hired and he's talking about eating kneecaps at his press conference. And everyone's like, it's Detroit and it's a joke. And now they're a game away from the Super Bowl. As a, as a former player and going through all these things, and I know – You've had some issues with your former coaches that have happened recently, but could you speak on how important that is truly? No, I mean, how you treat your players is, is everything. And, and the coaches that are the most successful are the ones that make their players feel like they're in it with them. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying that every player's coach is that coach. You got to be able to make the guys feel like not only you're out there with them, but they're willing to go hard for you. They don't think they can take advantage of you because you're nice. You don't yeah. think anyone's taking advantage of Dan Campbell, do you? Yeah. No. You want you want to go bite off kneecaps for that guy. He gets emotional about taking care of his guys. He gets emotional when they lose games because it means so much to him because he knows how much it means to the guys in the locker room. I get that feeling from Antonio Pierce. And, and the ability to let every guy know that there is no special treatment here, but that I got your back, that is a very special quality to have. Because in the NFL, things are going to ebb and flow. Look at Jared Goff with the Lions. He wasn't always balling there. He came in, he was a castaway from the Rams, and he had an up and down year that first year. Well, now he's a franchise quarterback. He's going to be the guy for the foreseeable future. Dan Campbell never 
wavered on Jared Goff. Even recently said, you're good enough for Detroit, right? That to me is the embodiment of what a coach has to be. Um, and all you want is honesty, right? That's what all the players want. They want a guy that's going to look them in the face and tell them the truth. That's what I think Antonio Pierce is going to give them. That's what I know Dan Campbell has given those guys in Detroit. And, and that's the most important part of it because if your players don't trust you, they're not going to go the extra mile for you. They're 100%. not going to give that little bit of extra, you know, blood, sweat, and tears for you because it's just about a check. And these guys have kids, wives, families. They're going to go harder for their family than they are for you. I feel like a coach like Dan Campbell and a coach like Antonio Pierce, they're including them in that family. Hey, man, it seems like it's a changing of the tide. And before we get into your podcast, because I do really want to talk about that, um, the news just broke earlier today. Tom Telesco gets hired. Of course, he was with the Chargers. And to me, the part that Raiders fans need to pay attention to is look at his draft history. Keenan Allen, Bosa, Derwin James, just to name a few. We can't name some of the Raiders draft picks of recent past because they're not in the league anymore. No disrespect right. um, for you. Your initial reaction to the hiring. My initial reaction to Tom Telesco getting hiring, first of all, I have a great relationship with Tom. Uh, he brought me in for a workout many, many years ago when no one else would bring me in and, and really believed in, in who I was. Obviously, they didn't sign me, but when he got uh, fired by the Chargers, I reached out to him. So I think the to, to answer your question, that was my first reaction. Second reaction was the Raiders are going to hire the guy that AP got fired? <laughs> like, he, he basically got him fired there with the Chargers point. because of the way that they finished their year. And uh, with, with Tom, he, he gave the coach the players. What you do with those players de determines how great of a coach you are. So I think that's where Raiders fans should more so look at it. Don't look at the record of the Chargers or how they may have struggled um, to really put a playoff team on the field. The roster that he built, the draft picks that he had, now it'll be on AP to make sure that those guys are all playing to the best of their ability. And I think Tom Telesco was a great hire. As a quick sidebar, how cold were you in Baltimore last weekend covering that Bills Ravens game? What? Listen, I tell people this all the time. They're like, yo, what's football weather? It's not negative three or three degrees. That ain't football weather. And if you say that's football weather, you ain't never played in those temperatures. Now, as a player, not a problem. When you have to play in a game like that, easy money, adrenaline is pumping. It's the divisional round of the playoffs. It could be week one, week five, week seven. You don't care. You're going to go play. But as a broadcaster, shit, I'm not trying to be out there. So I, I had all the layers I could possibly put on, and it was still cold. I had like winter gloves on, bro, winter gloves, and I couldn't feel my fingertips. <laughs> I couldn't feel them. So I saw the clip online of me like like strunched up a little bit. It didn't look like you could move your neck. I'm gonna be honest it, with you. It was it was so cold I couldn't move my neck. I'm looking at Scott Van Pelt like, hey, bro, when you send it to me, just let me know. <laughs> yeah, say my name because I can't look over. Just I can't look name. over. I'm, I'm gonna give you the eyes, but I can't turn the neck. Bay was so cold, but uh, I know some people say, oh, that's soft. It's, no, it's not soft. It's just being real. You go sit outside in three degree temperatures with whatever you got on for three hours, you're going to be cold too. <laughs> yeah, for hours. Hey, spoken like a true product of the Texas football system. I feel you. 100%. Right? Listen, we don't get cold like that in Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas, but the, also the temperatures are higher. So three degrees with, with the wind chill? Nah, man, that was not fun. No, I feel you. Well, you speak of the fun. Um, a thing I've, I've had a lot of fun listening to um, is your new podcast, RG3 and the Ones. And not to go on a tangent, just as a personal uh, sports personality content creator, like it's been fascinating to see the way the landscape has changed. Not only players controlling their own narrative, but yep. you getting to do these things that are your own. Um, just talk to me about the experience and how this came to be. Yeah, I mean, the experience has been great. I think uh, more, more and more you're seeing players take control of their narratives. Uh, I wish this had happened, what, it's 2024, so I wish this had happened 13 years ago um, because I think that a lot of the things that happened in my career maybe wouldn't have, wouldn't have happened because of the player empowerment, because of guys having podcasts and being able to speak to some of the issues that are going on. Uh, but for me, it was just about creating an environment where I can have conversations 
with, you know, guys that are currently playing or guys that, that hadn't played and really fully flesh out those conversations, not the ones that are made for like a 30 second clip or one yeah. minute clip on on ESPN where I work at. But to really dive deep into these issues and have more expounding conversations, essentially creating like a safe space to have those combos and be able to be vulnerable. That's why I was able to tell the story that I was able to tell because I wasn't sitting on that story about uh, Jay Gruden. He just said something and it was like, you know what? I couldn't say this back then because I was being the good soldier. And yeah. I wasn't perfect in D.C. None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. But that was some BS. So I was able to share that in that environment and be able to fully tell that story uh, for, I think it was like six, seven minutes, whatever it may be. I'm not going to get that time on ESPN. And now it's done, right? Because uh, the whole quote unquote feud was put away by two grown men and you move forward. I don't have anything else to say about that. You know, sure for me, RG3 and the Ones is an opportunity for people to actually come there and get something from some of the greats that have ever played the game, some of the greats that are playing the game, and take that one thing and apply it to their own life so they can become the one. That's always been my goal. I want to give back to people. I want to motivate. Every morning I get up and I send out a tweet of motivation because that's what it's all about. We all need those reminders. So the show is really my conduit to be able to help people and have great, phenomenal conversations around sports and entertainment. And I would urge all the Ready Nation to check out the Michael Irvin episode that happened a couple weeks ago, too, as you guys really talked about Antonio Pearson there. And we'll close out with this, man. Uh, and thank you so much for the time. Another fascinating thing, and your podcast goes with it, um, is your hustle. When it comes to <laughs> broadcasting, right. um, it, where where does that come from? <laughs> yeah, man, like I'm 33 years old, right? There, There's people in this industry that are in their 60s and 70s. Do you think, uh, I don't even know how old Al Michaels is, but do you think Al Michaels is going to run down the field with Dabo Sweeney? Hell no. Do you think that, uh, Kirk Herbstreet is going to race a Seahawk? No. Like, I want to be able to have fun doing this. Uh, like we talked about, my story, let me, let me stop for a second. Sports is all about telling stories, right? And telling the stories of the athletes and the coaches and everyone involved the right way. That's why I got into broadcasting, because I want to tell those stories the right way. I want to have fun with those stories. I want to um, be able to take and talk about the greatest to do it the right way. That wasn't done to me. So that in, that empowers me to do it the right way, while also knowing that at least at ESPN, the question is, is it a big E or is it a little E? And that's the question that my producer, Kim Belton, my first producer in college football, he asked me that. And I ain't know what he was talking about. I thought he was talking about the actual logo. But the, the real question was, is it big entertainment or is it little entertainment? And I'm all about being big entertainment because that's what the game is supposed to be about. If I'm calling a game and I'm excited, you're going to be excited. If I'm calling a game and I'm bored, you're going to be bored. So let's have some fun covering sports, telling stories the right way. And that's where my passion comes from. So I have a lot of energy naturally because I'm a younger guy, but I also have energy because I know that these guys deserve that type of energy when I'm covering it. RG3, just giving me more energy to continue the show, my G. Um, on, I can imagine you will be down here for the Super Bowl and all the craziness 100. down here in Vegas. So until then, be safe. And thank you so much for the time. No problem. I guess we're going to hop on again at the Super Bowl, huh? Yes. I, oh, Andrew, we'll talk. Make sure he comes to the booth. We'll be a radio row. We made it happen. <laughs> we'll easy, make it happen. <laughs> we got the word. Appreciate you, brother.